Good morning. Welcome again to Morning Devotions, and thank you again so much for our time together. Well, services are here again for the weekend. Tonight and on all campuses, I'm going to be teaching you about the gifts and power and moving of the Holy Spirit. It's going to be a great time together. But right now, let's come back to the book of Numbers chapter 22. Numbers chapter 22. It says, When the Israelites traveled to the plains of Moab and camped along the Jordan across Jericho, now Balak, son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites, and Moab was terrified because there were so many people. Indeed, Moab was filled with dread because of the Israelites. Then the Moabites said to the elders of Midian, This horde is going to lick up everything around us as an ox licks up the grass of the field. So Balak, son of Zippor, who was king of Moab at that time, sent messengers to some of Balaam, son of Beor, who was at Pethor near the river in his native land. Balak said, now the story continues all through this passage. And we know that Balaam caused a great, great deal of harm and a great deal of pain to the people of Israel. But I have a question for you today. Who was Balaam before? Who was Balaam before? Now, obviously he turned into a very bad man. A false doctrine is named after him by Jesus in Revelation 2.14, by Peter in 2 Peter 2.15, and by Jude in Jude verse 11. He was literally a prophet for prophet. He's one of the first guys we find in the Bible that, that makes money out of ministry and is, is ministering for money and a prophet. He's a prophet for prophet. And an entire doctrine of profiting for ministry is named after him. So we know he's a despicable guy. But was he always that way? Who was Balaam before? In chapter 22, verse 6, we see that this is a man that knew how to pray to God and knew how to get an answer. In chapter 22, verse 8, we see a man who obeyed God. In chapter 22, verse 9, we see a man that God came to. In chapter 22, verse 18, we find a man who said, I will not go beyond the command of God. So here we have a prophet, a true prophet of God that became corrupted by the allure of money. This is a man, I mean, think of just that one verse. This is a man that God came to. This is a man that encountered the physical manifest presence of God. This is a man that heard the voice of God. This is a man that prayed and God answered. This is, I mean, this is a great man of God. And he was corrupted by the desire for money. He found a way to get that money that those people were offering. He could not curse what God has blessed, but he knew how to separate those people from God. Now, brothers and sisters, I guess my question for you, who could you become but for the grace of God? Who will you remain by the grace of God? We need to realize we can, all the good that we are and have been can be forgotten if we allow ourselves to be called to the proverbial dark side if we allow money and sin to allure us and pull us away, and then everyone forgets who we used to be, and all they think about is who we became. Let's, by the grace of God, be kept by the grace of God.